Charlie was given Willy Wonka's chocolate factory 50 years ago, he should be getting ready to retire, and how will he choose his successor? He will hold a Hunger Games style tournament where the last child surviving gets the company. So pretty much what Wonka did. To be fair, at least they explicitly survived in the original book. I know that the Gene Wilder movie had Wonka say the children would be fine, if not a little wiser than before, but we never see them exit so it's still vague. Probably because in the books they leave partially deformed and they didn't have the budget or effects for that. Good point. They probably wouldn't have been able to pull off Mike's post-factory look in particular, at least without it looking right. Got to wonder what happened to them a week after getting home. I never took this perspective, but I'm sure any possible survivors wound up with lifelong disability. What were the deformities? Augustus Gloop squeezed thin by the pipes. Violet Beauregarde purple, but I don't know if she was made stretchy like the 2005 movie. Veruca Salt I think she just got covered in trash, lucky all things considered. Mike TV stretched out and made tall because of the taffy machine. Veruca Salt went on to become a popular alternative rock artist and wart removing cream infomercial celebrity. So Gloop gets to drink a crap ton of melted chocolate and then a free liposuction? Sounds like a deal to me. Mike was given the rack like it was 1478. I gave up on the 2005 version before it got to Violet but in the original, she wasn't stretchy. Her affliction was solely that the blueberry pie dessert course of her gum, that tasted like a three-course meal, turned her into a giant blueberry. In response to this, she was taken to the juicing room, where they squeezed out all the blueberry juice and she was back to the size and shape of a little girl, but she remained the color of a blueberry, and always would, if I recall correctly. Violet was completely blue, Mike was tall and thin like a bean pole from being stretched and Augustus was thinner and pipe-shaped from being in the pipe. Veruca got off easy since she was just covered in trash. Edit, Violet, not Samantha. Her father's name is Sam in the Gene Wilder movie and I misremembered her name. Who the hell is Samantha? Samantha, you're turning Samantha. I read the book a long ass time ago. How did the each kid go down anyways? One was shoved up a tube, one was shrunk, one got chubby and was rolled away, one fell in a hole, one went to market, one won the gold. In the newer movie, with Johnny Depp, they actually show the children leaving the factory after their apparent cures. While I don't think the rest of the movie was particularly as good or magical as the Gene Wilder version, they nailed the part where the other kids leave. Corridor crew on YouTube made an R-rated version on the idea that all the losers died. Here is link, web link. One got chubby and was rolled away, why does it sound so funny laughing my butt off? Now that I think about it. Was it the girl with a bubblegum fetish? Lol. She ate the blueberry gum, got really chubby, fell on her side, the Oompa Loompas rolled her off. They see me roll and they hate him. A private equity company bought the distressed assets of Wonka Chocolate in 1986, after the Oompa Loompas victorious class action lawsuit against Wonka management for union busting and unfair labor practices. Charlie Bucket was given a golden parachute of $10.5 million by the new owners, and is living comfortably in the Cayman Islands. The factory was sold to a European right, which then leased it back to Wonka. Increased manufacturing costs of the now unionized Oompa Loompas, along with the outstanding debt from the various lawsuits brought against the company by the heirs of the notorious Wonka 4 incidents in the early 1970s, resulted in the company moving operations to Indonesia. Product quality and consistency began to suffer due to additional cost-cutting measures. To survive, the company's unique intellectual property was auctioned off of the highest bidder in 1996. Wonka Company now exists as a mere shadow of its former self as a niche manufacturer of edible sex toys. He should have gone with Grunka Lunkas instead. Grunka Lunka Dunkity Darmed Guards. Shut the hell up. Jam a bastard it in. You crap. Chumba Wumbas were cheaper but too dickish. They kept Tup Thump in. They were always singing when they were winning though so they would have been worth it. They think they have a good union, but they really don't. 
Oompa Loompa, doom paddy do. I've got a labor union for you. Oompa Loompa, do pot a dee. If you are wise you'll pick it with me. They finally found a commercial use for that blueberry gum. The amount of people I know who want to be blueberries is staggering, like I get it, but wow. That last line man. I want to wonk a branded chalky dildo now. The everlasting gobstopper is still their number one seller, just for very different reasons. It's theoretically edible, but never shrinks. The perfect gag for long, long, sessions. Are you kidding? The only reason Wonka gave away the factory was that OSHA was just being created and there was no way he'd be able to pay to make the factory safe. Poor Charlie was out of business within two years, guaranteed. Fun fact, on the set of the movie, they received three OSHA violations. The first movie to ever get it from the new agency. The set was unsafe too. Come with me and you'll see a world of OSHA violations. Take a look, and you'll be, in awe from all of these citations. If you want to view lawsuits, simply look around and view them. Want to sue this place? Then sue them. Take them for what they're worth, there's nothing. To it. There is no, citation I know, to compare with OSHA violations. Living here, you'll pay fees, if you truly want the factory. I love Reddit so much. Washington DC, Charles Bucket, longtime CEO of Wonka Factory, was indicted today for a litany of factory safety violations, according to the Occupational Safety and Health Administration, OSHA. The case is expected to go to trial in the coming months. Bucket, who has run the company for nearly 50 years, was given ownership of the factory as a child, when founder William Wonka turned over ownership after a bizarre contest. Wonka went on to be indicted himself for similar violations, but after a lengthy trial, was found to be a paranoid schizophrenia and clinically insane. He spent his final years in a mental institution, where staff and even fellow patients found him to be terrifying. Wonka was found deceased in his room years later, having covered the walls in Aramaic, written in his own blood. We refute any claims that workers have been treated unfairly in our facilities, said James Anderson, Bucket's attorney handling the case. In fact, our factory has a proud history of employing disabled employees almost exclusively and treating them more than fair. The disabled employees Anderson spoke of are, of course, the now infamous Oompa Loompas, a species discovered to be living in the wilderness that are almost genetically identical to humans. An OSHA spokesperson claimed that not only were the employees mistreated, but paid exclusively in cocoa beans, a clear violation of wage standards. You cannot pay your employees in cocoa beans, said OSHA agent Lindsay Powers. It is not legal tender and has resulted in a bartering system amongst the Oompa Loompa population, and caused them to steal from multiple businesses for food and other essentials. An estimated 97% of the Oompa Loompa population have felony records, much higher than any other population. They are also prone to singing at random, which has caused tension between them and the local population. Last year, a total of 382 Oompa Loompas were killed by locals. I think people are overreacting to the entire case and trying to use us as a scapegoat, Anderson went on to say. We are a simple chocolate factory, except for the fact that we exclusively employ small, orange-skinned, green-haired men with white eyebrows who sing all day. There's nothing odd about that, and certainly nothing illegal. We're no different than say, Nestle. He went on to say. Have you ever heard of Nestle coming under fire for business practices? Of course not. Mr. Bucket refused to comment for this article. That was scrumdedly umptious. And illegal immigrations, airspace violations and demonic infestations. The second book was wild. FDA and Ag Department would also freak the F out at food safety violations. I wonder how many fat German children PPM are allowed before they got to shut that factory down. Considering it's an entire river, it may still fall within guidelines. Lot of liters of chocolate. On the other hand, that kid was really fat. How do you think the Wonka chocolate got its flavor? Wasn't much sugar that the Oompa Loompas dumped in. Authentic German chocolate, made from fresh German. Does it still count as vegan? 
Fat Kid to Chocolate Ratio Deemed Safe by FDA and New World Leading Chocolate Factory Can confirm. It was effing insane. Take a look, into the sea of all our shady operations. This deserves more upvotes. Legal Eagle did a Laws Broken segment on this movie. So, so many violations. Those Oompa Loompas should have really been wearing hair nets. Does OSHA require them so they don't get caught in machines? Never occurred to me. I thought it was just to keep hair from falling into products. I'm pretty sure it's so it doesn't get in people's food. I think that there is an acceptable amount of hair that can get in people's food. Now I remember reading, and don't quote me on this, that a bit of hair can make bread taste better. I swear I don't smoke crack. What do you smoke, then? I want whatever you've got that's making you use hair like a seasoning. I smoke fine great Indian dog hair. There's an acceptable amount of everything that gets in people's food. It's literally impossible to remove all contaminants from everything, the same with water, air, etc. It's an FDA requirement to reduce hair contamination. OSHA only requires that long hair is contained in some way to avoid tangling with machinery. Which can include anything from tying the hair into a bun, to hats, to hairnets, to just having short hair. OSHA doesn't care if your hair gets into the machine, only that it does so without you still attached to the hair. Yup. FDA equals no more EU. OSHA equals no more OW. I think it's an FDA requirement, not OSHA. Yeah, we shut Charlie down. Also, who would have thought that the person-child labor laws would go into effect against would be the owner? You beat me to it, I also love that theory. A film theory. Oh, that brings back memories. Love the wacky theories, hated the persona. And. Cut. It was in the UK wasn't it? Wouldn't the factory be put against UK safety laws, not American ones? Wasn't that the plot of the movie Snowpiercer? This comment must be really confusing if you haven't seen the original video. I'd like to not be confused please. It's a good one. Web link. I have never been more sure of anything in my life. Come with me and you'll see, a world of pure extreme annihilation. I am a turd. I found this video a while back and love the connection between the two. I've seen that video floating around YouTube and just from the title, I thought it was a stretch. Now after actually watching the video, I'm convinced. That's one mind-blowing video there my friend. Nice. Epping laughing out loud at the subtitles around 239. Snowpiercer. Holy F, who would have thought? Just look up Wonka Piercer. There are a bunch of videos. Haven't seen whatever video you're talking about, but having seen both movies I get what original poster was saying. Trial by Wombat? It was so convincing I choose to believe it. Fan theories are usually pretty out there, but this one is oddly plausible. I suggest everyone look up the video about it on YouTube. It makes a good bit of sense, in a weird way. That was my first thought when I saw this post. That is the best fan theory in the world. Came to see this comment. W. What now? It's a fan theory. There's a popular video on it. The crazy thing is that it actually makes a lot of sense in some ways. Almost like the creator had it in mind as a loose premise. Oh, I am so looking this up. Thanks you. Laughing my butt off, I saw that video. Was kind of hoping this would be the top comment. Being a minor, Charlie's factory was sold against his wishes by a certain relative who wanted some carpet for the floors and non-cabbage flavors of soup and tobacco, sold for lots and lots of tobacco. I'm under the impression that Wonka was smart enough to leave it in escrow, trust until Charlie was old enough. Oh yeah definitely. At least new movie Grandpa Joe is actually a good person and started helping out around the house. I think they realized how much of a POS they wrote Grandpa Joe in the first one and fixed it in the reboot. 
Wait there is a reboot? Yeah Tim Burton starring Johnny Depp Oh, Charlie vs Wonka now that I think of it, I remember a few scenes Wait that is Johnny Yep, it surprised me too, Wonka looks nothing like him It could be Charlie from the first movie Then he retires from the factory to build Snowpiercer for the movie Wonka Piercer confirmed yeah the newer one is called Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and is pretty awesome in terms of effects. Johnny Depp plays Wonka. This is 100%, what would happen in real life. I bet he'd sell it at a low ball offer, too. Can't forget his booger sugar. Have you seen Grandpa Joe's long ass coke nails? Yeah, there's a 100% chance that the second Grandpa Joe stepped out of the elevator, he got on the horn to Slugworth. Slugworth was revealed to be working for Wonka at that point. A man claiming to be Slugworth was revealed to be working with Wonka I always assumed it was a fake. Slugworth is real. The man who offered to buy Charlie's everlasting gobstopper was a plant. Cabbage soup is easily top 5 soups why would you sell a cash cow like the chocolate factory to get other flavors? Agreed, but I mean, lobster bisque, broccoli and cheddar, chicken and rice, and tomato bisque are all worthy of something. Maybe not a chocolate factory but something for sure. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.